Hey, today I'm going to show you how to make a very calming, ethereal, spacey pad in Razor. The end result is going to sound very similar to this. Yes, because believe it or not, aside from all of the advertising that Native Instruments did for this synthesizer, it is good for more than just dubstep. It's a very well-rounded synthesizer. And it is very capable, quite capable, of making very soft, relaxing sounds like that one. So the first step to uh, making the sound, and I'm already on the bass sound, slightly edited already, but the oscillator one and pulse to saw I turned the glide down and made mono to poly on the maximum amount of voices now if you have the full version of reactor you can change the voices to whatever you want but if not the normal amount of voices should do fine enough for this okay so first in oscillator one well actually first what I want to do is I want to make this uh, to negative 12 Otherwise, it'll sound like that. Okay, so first, in oscillator one, uh, we're going to change this to primes. Now, Razor is an additive synthesizer, meaning it's a collection of a lot of much smaller sounds added together to make one big sound. And all of these sounds have an assigned value to them. What the primes oscillator does is it, is it only plays sounds with a prime value on it, a prime numbered value. It'll sound a lot like this. I like it because you can very nicely mix octaves together. It sounds so good. And you'll notice that's how it works in this synthesizer here. If you listened closely, I did that same thing. Of kind of mixing together two octaves a bit. And the amount will make it go either to sort of to the left or to the right. And the amp is clearly just the volume. And the color is either if it's going to be soft or sharp. And the ratio is just flat out the octave. It's kind of like this ratio, but sort of more instant. Okay, so next we're going to look at oscillator number two, in which we're going to go to number pitch pen, which is very similar in a lot of ways. Is It lets you change all of the sounds either by octave, even, odd, or all of them. It's a very similar effect, which is what I'm going for. I'm going for another way to combine sort of two octaves of sound into one, but to be very slightly offsetting from the prime of one. That's a bit louder now. Okay, so I'm going to hold off on the filters for now and head towards the stereo effects. And there's lots of very good things here, and these are easily the most important section of the synthesizer. Is This is what's going to change your sound from sounding amateur to sounding really deep. I'm going to be doing a unisound noise today. It sort of has a phasing effect. 
It's very, very nice. Just listen to the difference that made. And we're much closer than we used to be to our final sound. Okay, so now we're going to deal with the filters. The first filter, I'm going to make a vowel filter. It gives a very beautiful sound. Because basically what it does it's a, it's a filter that shapes sing things in such a way where it'll make the sound that you specify here. And you can change the singer type and the slope. And also, you may have noticed that the main pad sound changes, sort of morphs. Like, if you listen below those little bloops and whatnot, it morphs a bit. The vowel filter is the thing that does that, and I do that with LFO. I make it very low, and I like changing the LFO to this setting the most. And you can set the LFO, if you've ever used Massive, you'll see this familiar. You can set the LFO through this thing, right here. And you can set the dial to be affected by a good number of things. We're going to do LFO1. And we're going to set this to go... So now it'll go kind of like that, back and forth. Yeah, and I apologize if sometimes you can't hear me while I'm playing. Because I'm recording all of this with fraps, the audio and the video and all, so I don't have different tracks. Okay, so next we're going to go to filter 2, and we're going to change this to the waterbend filter. This is one of my favorite filters for maybe any synthesizer ever, because what it does is it, is it takes all of the partials and makes them look like a ripple effect. from our finished product. The water band is how you do that. Okay, so now we're going to make this sound much more like a pad by messing with the ADSR. Attack, delay, sustain, release, if you've ever used a synthesizer before, which if you're using Razor, I hope you have in the past. You make the attack slow. The release long. Another interesting thing you can do is that Razor has a fantastic delay effect. 
because the reason that all of the effects are so interesting in Razor is because they're not normal effects. When you put on an effect, it actually directly manipulates the sound. Which is why when you add a reverb from the Razor's list of effects, it's not going to sound even close to the same as if you add a reverb plugin onto it. It'll sound completely different and generally a lot better if you add the built-in one on Razor because it affects the sound in a different way. The delay is the same way. We're not really adding an effect to the sound as much as we're adding to the actual sound. So let's add some delay in there. It's just something to make the fading away a little bit more interesting. Because it makes it slightly uneven, like uh, 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 while it's fading away. And that's very nice for a pad. And then one more little optional thing I like to do is in this little effect section, I like to add a thing called Stiff String. And it just gives that little extra bit of magic that makes it sound so so nice. And I think our synthesizer is pretty much done here. Except, except for one more thing. We need to automate the frequency. Now, this is the part where you can probably quit if you're using a DAW that's different from Reaper. Because you automate differently in every DAW, generally. But here's how you would do this in Reaper. I already had this thing open from before, but here's how you would get to it. If you click on this button here, track envelopes slash automation, you see a big list of things you can automate in Reactor 5. What you do to find what you want, let me put that back up there, is just to think about what you want. Waterbend frequency. So let's look up FR. Oh look, it's already right there, and I already had that visible and everything. Let's put that back again. Let's see, where do I need this? Well, let's just make this all interesting here. I'll create a bunch of new points here and there. And now that's going to sound very interesting. I'm going to mute this. Now notice how this frequency knob is going to be changing all by itself. Right here, pay attention to here, as well as here. And if you're willing to get very creative, you can actually automate anything on here just the way that you did this. It's that easy. If you're good enough, you could automate every control on here to make the exact sound you want, but that wouldn't be very useful. It would be very slow. The way to go about it is to do everything you can do in Razor, and everything you can't do with your da of your choice manipulating Razor. Now, I don't know how other DAWs would do this same thing. Reaper is the only one I'm very familiar with. I am also familiar with Pro Tools. 
but for how to do this in something like Ableton or FL Studios, I'm not sure. I'm sure that there's guides somewhere in the documentation of how to do that. But if you're going to be working with a synthesizer like Razer, the more that you use Razer, the more need you're going to see to learn how to automate it very well. And well, that's how you made this pad. I hope you enjoyed this video and found it very useful. If you enjoyed this and found it useful, I would really appreciate if you would subscribe.